Our lesson today comes out of Hebrews chapter 7, it's verses 11 through 25. And I have as a title, Christ and Aaron, but you're going to have to really listen closely to make that connection because Aaron is hardly mentioned. (laughs) So anyway, let's see about getting it together. Our text is, Aaron, or Christ is superior to Arian. Aaron is uh, who? Brother of, Moses. Brother of Moses. And uh, it's really not Aaron. We don't ever say Arianic priesthood, do we? What do we say? Levitical priesthood out of Levi. Well, here it's demonstrated in the book of Hebrews with a comparison to Melchizedek. That Christ is superior to Melchizedek. I mean, no, excuse me. That Melchizedek is superior to Aaron. That's how it goes. And Christ is after the order of Melchizedek. He's going to use Psalms chapter 110 verse 4 as a base for this argument. And that says, The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek. What does order mean? Huh? It is the, you can say a level. You can say uh, a commission. You can say an order that's been given to him. Uh, You can, there there are a lot of different things that, but it's talking about who he was, what he was doing, and that priesthood. Christ is superior to every order. Christ is superior to me. He's superior to you. He's superior to anything I do, anything you do. He is superior. Who is Melchizedek? Well, he was a man. The king and a priest. King and a priest at the same time. But what about Christ? He was a king and priest too. He was a man too, but he was also God in the flesh. Okay. Psalms 110 verse 4 actually is going to be setting aside the Levitical priesthood founded by Aaron. Do what? By, By Aaron. Yeah. So... This this setting aside is important because with the setting aside of the priesthood, what else goes with it? Well, the sacrifices that the priest would make would go because that's no more needed. Jesus offered the sacrifice how many times? Once, and it wasn't for himself he offered it, but it was for us. That's really different, y'all. Where does the authority of the priest come from in order to offer those sacrifices to God? It had to come from God in what? In the law. So if the priesthood is no good anymore of Aaron, guess what? The law's not any good either. Okay. Here's the next thing. It is impossible for two priesthood to abide at the same time. They don't operate side by side. Because You've got one that a, 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 has the authority of God. I can't get my words together this morning. And the other one. No, the other one does not have any authority from God. Elaborate on that. What do you mean? Okay. The other one doesn't have God only, re, only established one priesthood. Okay. What's the other one you're referring to? Anything that you want to put up there is not from the one God authorized. Okay, I thought you were referring to something specific. 
just one at a time. Right. All right? The fact that a new priesthood is established requires the other one's got to go away. Got a demise I have there. You can put disappear or, or become extinct or whatever you want in there. Because you can't have but one. Now that sounds crazy to us. But in that Jewish mind, where did they put Moses? Way up here. Where did they put Aaron? Way up here. Where did they put the law that Moses gave? Way up here. Where did they put Aaron? Way at the, the, the uh, priesthood that Aaron established? Way up here. So when you say that, there can only be one, and we're going to see that in a minute in the scripture, that really throws a ringer in the mind of the Jew. Verse 11 says, If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? On one hand, the priesthood was exactly what God had said it should be. He gave it to them in the law. It was a law thing. But those priests were just men. And as men, what did they do? They sinned. They, sinned. they were not the perfect sacrifice a giver. When they went into the Holy of Holies, they had to clean up. They probably were afraid to go in there. And die. They were afraid to go in there. But they had to clean up themselves two ways, three ways. They had to wear clean clothes. And they had to go in there multiple times. And every time they went in there, they had to change clothes. It had to be clean. And their bodies had to be clean. Their bodies had to be clean. They had to wash every time they went in there. So when they changed clothes, they had to wash again. Then they could not carry their sins in there. They had to offer a sacrifice for sin for themselves first. Before they went into the Holy of Holies? As, as they went in, actually. Okay. okay. So this, this priesthood could not make anybody complete, perfect, the King James says, perfection. It means complete or it means whole. It means well. It means without sin. Could not do it. Because if it could, there'd be no need for Jesus. Does that make sense to you? Okay, that's verse 11 then. Verse 12. Listen to this carefully. For the priesthood being changed, there is made necessity a change also of the law. Not a change of tradition. Not a change of ordinances. Not a change of rites or services. But a change of what? Right, what law. Is, what was the change of the law? Was there a change of the law? Yes, there had to be. Because in the law it prescribes that the priests come out of Aaron. Okay. That's why that's so important. And he was out of Jesus was out of Judah. Jesus was out of Judah. Melchizedek was before Aaron was ever born. Yeah. So there was no way he could be of that particular priesthood in the old law. That's right. Well, Aaron Levi comes from Aaron. So. It, this is a, an extremely important concept. It is extremely hard for me to explain. I am sorry, y'all. But when the priesthood changed 
the law also had to change. Because the law prescribed the priesthood come from Aaron. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. After this, this change of the law means that the priesthood did not have to come from Aaron. That's correct. Okay. Verse 13. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. There was never a person from the tribe of Judah that ever offered anything at the altar. Now right now my mind escapes me, but there is a king who tried to do that. He wasn't a tribe of Judah. He was a king. And he was going to go to battle. And the priests were not there. And he thought he was going to be attacked and he wanted to get the sacrifices offered so God would be on his side. And he told the priest, uh, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, there were, there were some priests there. They weren't the high priest there. Bring me the, the animals. I'm going to offer the sacrifice now. Well, that didn't work too well. Because it wasn't needed anymore. No, at that point in time it was needed, but he, God was not on his side because he was not of the tribe of Aaron. He was not a priest. That didn't work too well. He lost the battle. Yeah. And it was against Babylon. Okay. You had to be of that tribe under the law. That's important. We don't think about it much in our minds. But those Jewish Christians, yeah. Jewish Christians? They were Jews first, then they became Christians. Those Jewish, that's why it's the book of Hebrews. These Hebrew Christians. That's the thing all, all, all the time. And their mind was in, trained in this law and what had to be. Under the law. Yeah, they were very traditional. And now verse 12 says, that's got to change. That has to change. Let's see verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. Where would Moses speak that? In the rites, in the ordinances, or in the law? In the law. But he didn't say anything about the Lord coming out of Judah. Therefore, if you hear somebody saying that Jesus will set up his kingdom on earth and reign for a thousand years, According to the order of Melchizedek, at the same time he's king, he has to be what? A priest. A priest. But on earth, a man from a tribe of Judah cannot be a priest on earth. That's what the law said. King and priest at the same time. Verse 15. And it is far more evident. For after that the similitude of Melchizedek. There riseth another priest. There had to be one. Not in Aaron's tribe. But there had to be one. Who was without beginning. And without end. There had to be one. Who was greater than Father Abraham. And what is the mark that, that Melchizedek was greater than Father Abraham? He told us in the first part of the chapter. Abraham paid unto Melchizedek what? Tithes. And that's the proof that he is greater than Abraham. Okay. Okay. Verse 16. Who is made not after the law of carnal commandment. 
but after the power of an endless life. Do you get that? The law of commandments was spiritual, is carnal. It was carnal. You don't put that on that very often, do you? But that's what the Bible says. The law was carnal. It means fleshly. It means it was physical. It means that it's not spiritual. The power of an endless life. Is that physical or is that spiritual? That's spiritual. So do you see the change that goes from physical to spiritual? All right. For he testifies, who's he? That's God the Father. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Where did that statement come from? We opened this lesson. He uses as a basis Psalms chapter 110 and verse 4. He's going to quote that exactly in a minute. Verse 18. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. The commandment. He says it's two things. It's weak and it's unprofitable. Why is the word of God in the Old Testament on the law, why is it weak? It, not, for, not forever. Every year they, God made a remembrance of it. But what about the, in the context of this passage? What it was those priests? They were just men. And those men had sin. That's weakness. It was unprofitable because it wouldn't forgive the sin. It did not make you where you could come into the Holy of Holies. And that's what he's going to tell you to do in this book. Made nothing perfect. Nothing perfect. We have access to God like we do. No access to God like we do. Because uh, uh, that way you had to go through a priesthood. But now from Revelation chapter 1. It says he has made you both kings and priests unto God. Why? Because you have been baptized into the body of the king and the priest forever. Amen. You are a part of that priesthood now. You, every single one of you who is a Christian, you are now a part of that priesthood. And you can go to God anytime you need to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're baptized into Christ. Yeah. And he is our king and priest. Therefore, he makes us king and priest. Not because he anoints us individually. But because we are a part of him. In the body of Christ. What does that make the church? We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. That makes it so important, y'all. Weakness? No, because we're in Christ. Unprofitable? No, because we are sons of God. Verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. That old law made nothing perfect. It was incapable, it was weak, it was unprofitable. Nothing. But the bringing in of a better hope, where did you get that? It is in Jesus as he went into the Holy of Holies on our behalf. But do you remember chapter 6? 
You go back to chapter 6. And he gave that long scenario of God promising Abraham a child when he was too old to have one. And what happened? He had one. Why did he have one? Because God said so. That's why. And then the very next verse says, And we have this hope. Not of having a child. But when God promises, guess what happens? It comes to, buy, to pass. And what has He promised you since you are in Christ? Eternal life. Eternal life. Salvation. Charlie, the law. That's one thing. Is we try to live at home in Christ. It ain't going to work. Either. Not going to work. The law made nothing perfect. But this hope. Contrary to nothing perfect, this hope makes you perfect or complete. That's what that means. And because we are in Christ, and because we are complete, what does it say? Draw near unto God. James says if we draw near unto God, what? He draws near to us. Okay. And we have a responsibility be able to share the hope within us to others. Absolutely. In fact, the scripture says that they will see the hope that's in yeah. Verse 20. And inasmuch as not without an oath he was made a priest. Do you remember it in chapter 6? Chapter 6 says that God was sure on his promises by two immutable things. He swore. And because of who he is, he cannot lie. Now, God made this promise. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Did that come to pass since God swore? He swore with an oath he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this was with an oath. By him that said unto him, The Lord swore and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. But if he's a priest for order forever after the order of Melchizedek, that means the priesthood is changed. And if the priesthood is changed, the law must also change. Verse 22. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament or covenant or agreement. What does the word surety mean? Guarantee. He is our guarantee. You go to Ephesians chapter 1 and it says that you've been given the Holy Spirit with this same word, surety, guarantee, or a down payment. You've been given that. Why is the change of the law that came and the change of the priesthood that came a better testament? Yeah. You go straight to the Lord when you need Him. Go to one another on each other's behalf. As you say, stand in the gap for one another. Oh yeah. And this guarantee is my salvation in Christ. It is not, uh, maybe I'll go to heaven. It is not, I sure wish I would. No. No. You stay faithful in Christ and it is a sure thing. And he says, Come boldly. That's coming, isn't it? <laughs> and they truly were made priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. Those priests, every single one of them, died. 
But this man, <laughs> because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. I've come to be, be aware of something that I've known for a long time, but I've never put it together. When Jesus was born, it was God made a man. He wasn't God who just inhabited a man. That man, Jesus, standing over there on the street corner, he is God. Notice, this is written after his resurrection. This was written after his ascension. And in verse 24, look at it. What is Jesus called? A man. And he continues for how long? Forever. What does he continue as? A man. Yeah. I'm preparing a lesson for the Eastwood congregation on a Wednesday night sometime in July on what Jesus suffered, what he gave up to save my soul. I don't know how I'm going to put that, but there it is. He was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Was God. This says he's a man in heaven, the right hand of the Father. Yeah, he's spiritual. Verse 25, wherefore is able also to save them to the utmost that come unto him by unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. This is what he's doing now. He is standing there in the presence of God saying, Charlie, Kate is ours. Yeah, he made a mistake. His heart wasn't right. He said things he shouldn't do. He did something he shouldn't do, but he is ours. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 26. For such an high priest became us, or is given to us, who is holy, he is harmless, he is undefiled, he is separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. The word holy kind of summarizes all the rest of that stuff. There is nothing that has ever been like him. He is separate and apart Pure and holy, righteous goodness. He is everything positive and nothing negative. Higher in the heavens. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, for first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did. Once when he offered up himself. Once. And so you're going to take communion in a few minutes. Sacrifice that was made for your sins. He offered it up once. For the law makes men high priests which have infirmity. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, separate and apart from it, maketh a son who is consecrated forevermore. Not a part of the old law. Since the law. Separate and apart. He's the son. Not according to Arianic priesthood, but after the order of Melchizedek. Does that make sense to y'all now? Amen.